Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. The Merits of the Big Book by Joanne K. There is an old saying that suggests we should not throw the baby out with the bathwater. In other words, there may be some nuggets of gold, or a kid, in that dirty water. That is how I feel about the big book, BB. There is a great deal in the book that I find objectionable, especially as an atheist. However, I have found pieces of brilliance contained within it. I am not suggesting that everyone embrace the BB and all of its doctrine. I am only suggesting that there may be some ideas that recovering folks may find helpful. As for what isn't useful, I will not go into all of the negative things that disturb me about the BB, the Christian slant, the sexism, the misogyny. I recognize these, but have found they may be overlooked. Suffice it to say that I have a whole chapter that long ago I literally put a paper clip around. The information was just not relevant to me. The whole concept behind being a free thinker is that everyone has a right to decide for themselves what is relevant to them and what is not. What I will discuss in this essay are a few of the things that I have found to be helpful to me. First, though, my reason for writing this essay. Some individuals in the agnostic, atheist, and free thinkers meetings of AA would have you believe that the big book is useless and that it is not essential to read. Unfortunately, a newcomer, having found a group of people that they think may help them maintain sobriety, may hear this and take it to heart. As a result, they may not even consider reading the BB. In my opinion, this would be a shame. The newcomer may actually find, as I have, some ideas and concepts that are vital to their recovery. I offer this review as an option. Having been out as an atheist for a number of years, I have reread the BB and I will present to you some of the things that I have found to bring true for me. Withdrawing from alcohol can be very difficult. It can, in fact, be deadly. One very practical idea that is proposed in the BB is that hospitalization may be necessary to deal with withdrawal. Treatment for alcohol withdrawal is mentioned twice in the BB. Its merits are suggested in the foreword on pages 24 and 26. For the alcoholic who is very jittery or befogged, as well, Bill Wilson's own experience with treatment is mentioned on page 7 and then again on page 13. In the chapter, Into Action, the fifth step is described and this caution is offered. We have no right to save our own skins at another person's expense. 74. In doing a fifth step and making amends, a recovering alcoholic may feel they want to come clean about a behavior to the person harmed. I take this portion of the book to suggest that, yes, we should tell someone about our behavior, but not necessarily the person that was impacted. For example, we need to consider whether we need to tell our aging parents about every time that we were, in fact, not at work, but were out drinking when we canceled plans with them. I always thought I was a very selfless person. I believed I was kind and helpful to others. There is a section in the BB that challenged these beliefs. It begins on page 60 with, Each person is like an actor who wants to run the whole show, is forever trying to arrange the lights, the ballet, and the rest of the actors. In trying to make these arrangements, our actor may sometimes be quite virtuous. He may be kind, considerate, patient, generous, even modest and self-sacrificing. Of course, this doesn't always work, and the results may be disastrous with arguments and ruined relationships. Here's what rang true for me. 
Is he not really a self-seeker even when trying to be kind? The reality is, I don't know how everyone should run their lives. I only think I do. If I try to make people act as I want them to act, chaos usually ensues. I found something in the big book that was very helpful to me in understanding how much I should or could do for another suffering alcoholic slash addict. If he is not interested in your solution, if he expects you to act only as a banker for his financial difficulties or a nurse for his sprees, you may have to drop him until he changes his mind. This he may do after he gets hurt enough. 95. This sounds rather cold and uncaring. However, it helped me see that if I loaned money or continually doled out sympathy to a person that was continuously relapsing, in today's psychology field, this is known as enabling, then I was keeping them from feeling what they needed to feel in order to hit bottom and subsequently seek recovery. On page 122 of the BB, there is a request for compassion for the family of a practicing alcoholic. Years of living with an alcoholic is almost sure to make a wife, partner, or child neurotic. The entire family is to some extent ill. We don't get completely selfish in our recovery. Compassion is required for those around us who may have been affected by our drinking slash using. I usually suggest to the partner of someone that I'm working with that they might find some compassion and understanding in Al-Anon. This section of the BB also helped me recognize my own adult child of an alcoholic issues. I wasn't just an alcoholic. I've also been affected by my family's drinking and I need to continue to be healed from that or I will not stay sober. Unfortunately, sometimes I hear in the rooms that God is the only thing we need. And if we pray right, we will be relieved of our addictions, cancer, kleptomania, or whatever else troubles us. There's a section of the big book which contradicts this. This world is abundantly supplied with fine doctors, psychiatrists, and practitioners of various kinds. Do not hesitate to take your health problems to them, page 133. Sound advice if you ask me. I did not relate to all the stories in the big book. My life is quite different from the lives of the mostly men that are described in the book. However, there were a number of things in the stories that I could relate to that I found very helpful despite being a woman of the 21st century. Early in my sobriety, it was suggested to me that I read the chapter titled Freedom from Bondage. I found the first few paragraphs in that story to be very helpful in understanding what my alcoholic drinking was all about. It seemed I had to drink or I would go insane. Reading it again, I still find it to be true. I am one of those whose history proves conclusively that my drinking was a symptom of a deeper trouble. Through my efforts to get down to causes and conditions, I stand convinced that my emotional illness was present from my earliest recollection. Page 544. I never did react normally to emotionally charged situations. I've always considered myself to be an emotional coward. I needed a crutch, something to help ease the blow. These quotes are still very comforting to me. I realized I was not the only one that had these issues and that my alcoholism was not just about how much I drank. These are a few of the nuggets of gold that I've found in the big book. There are many others. Since I do not believe the BB to be sacred writing, I have no qualms in taking parts of it and rewriting them so they fit better with my world view. I've written another version of the 12 steps, for example, and taken out the God stuff. Also, I have written a secular version 
of the acceptance statement on page 449. But the meaning is still the same. I have to accept reality for what it is and deal with my response to it. I believe the BB should neither be formally rewritten, ignored, or cast out of AA. I believe it should be accepted as a text that was written in 1939, when the fellowship was very young. Much more has been learned about alcoholism and about the development of human beings since then, which makes some of the writings irrelevant. However, I believe the BB should be left intact and considered a historical document, one that may be beneficial to anyone seeking recovery. I think we should be adding to the literature of AA by writing from the perspective of atheists, agnostics, and free thinkers. How do we, as secularists, stay sober? How are we different from the believers in AA? And more importantly, how are we the same? About the author, Joanne K. Joanne K. is a member of the Beyond Belief group in Toronto. She believes that working the principles of the steps into her life has resulted in her 29 years of recovery. She and others from her group have recently added a secular step meeting to the group. The original print version of this story, Don't Throw the Baby Out with the Bathwater, The Merits of the Big Book by Joanne K., may be found on the website aabeyondbelief.com under the Language of Recovery section, dated July 24, 2016. This audio version was produced on January 6, 2016.